Hi, you guys. Welcome back to another video. Happy Friday. Today, we're going to do another movie review. And this movie review, this film review is going to be called Something New. Something New was uh, created in 2006 and it was directed by Sana Hamri. And let's go ahead and get into this review. All right, so the main characters that are acting in this film is Sanaa Lathan. She plays Kenya Denise McQueen. Then you have Simon Baker. He's playing Brian Kelly. Then you have Blair Underwood. He's playing Mark, Mark Harper. And you have uh, Donald Faison. He's playing... Uh, Nelson McQueen, which is Kenya's brother. You have Alfre Woodard, who is playing Joyce McQueen, and that's Kenya's mother. You have Earl Billings, Edmund, Edmund McQueen, and that is Kenya's father. And then you have Taraji P. Henson in this film as one of the friends. You have uh, Golden Brooks, Mike Epps. So it's a, uh, and then uh, who else? Wendy Raquel Robinson. She's also a friend of Sanaa Lathan's character in this film. So very, very uh, great cast in this movie. And so this movie, I'll read the, um, the log line. It says a smart, successful black woman struggles with her feelings for a charming blue collar white guy in this funny, touching film. So let's go ahead and get into this film. So I, um, I was a senior in college when this, or not, I was a senior in high school when this film came out. And I think, um, well, let's also mention that this film is like woman power all, like all over the film because it was produced by uh, Stephanie, uh, let me get her name right, Stephanie Elaine. She is a producer. Some of her other um, films are, um, let me look at her film while you're, Photography, um, Beyond the Lights, um, Biker Boys, Hustle and Flow, um, Dear White People. So she's made a ton of different other films, and this is, and she is the producer on this one. And then it was also written by a, a woman, uh, Chris Turner. Um, she has, she's written for episodes like Sister, Sister, Living Single, um, The Bernie Mac Show, Everybody Hates Chris. So she, you know, has experience there working in this, in this genre. And I really picked this film because last week we did Ease By You and that was a heavy drama. So I wanted to get into the rom-com of it all. I wanted to do a romantic comedy. And so this is a romantic, I would say it's a, it's a lighthearted film, but it deals with a heavy topic of interracial dating. And so I just want to go through the film uh, from top to bottom as if we were watching it together. So the first thing that I noticed was I love the opening. Um... It opens with her dreaming and her dream is interrupted by an alarm clock. So her dreams <laughs> um, are met with her reality and her reality is, is that she, um, she is single. She's single and it's Valentine's Day. So uh, we, we are greeted with a radio show host that is on, I believe is connected to her alarm clock and he's painting the scene and the setting is in LA. So in our last film, the setting was in rural Louisiana. This film, we are in California. So we already have two problems when this film opens. The first problem is, is that she's single and then she looks out into her backyard and you see this unkept, uh, crazy looking backyard 
trees and shrubbery and dead vines and branches growing everywhere and she's single it opens she's you know doing her workout and then we see her in her element which is at the accounting firm i believe she's a count an accountant in this film and she and we get introduced to her and her name what a beautiful name like kenya like i i, I think that that's so beautiful and it kind of signifies, you know, being black, being a black woman. Um, I think it's beautiful. So she she doesn't necessarily have no plans. She does meet with her girlfriends uh, at the end of the day. And this is where we get to learn, you know, about each one of them and their viewpoints on dating. And so they are all educated black women. And I love the direction of the camera circling around the table as they give their perspectives on finding that ideal black man um, and talks about not being married yet and being in that percentage of women who are still single. And in this film, I love how there is a sense of authenticity and, and culture um, there's different shots of the community and people in that community. And I think that that, that is very, um, that is very genuine. I think that comes across, we get the culture of LA and, you know, um, urban LA. She has decided to go on a blind date. She's like, you know, I'm tired of being single. I'm going to give it a shot. One of her coworkers sets her up on a blind date. And so she's already anxious you can tell she's anxious she's a very um put together woman her she has long straight black hair she she dresses in all neutrals and she's kind of like a minimalist in that way so she's walking she's looking she's anxious she doesn't want to be there and a shout out they did a shout out to starbucks which is kind of you know maybe that's when it was first becoming popular like i said this film came out in 2006 so it was like the meetup place, like everybody was there. And so we have this, uh, we have the camera view where she's looking and she's looking and she's looking at different shots and uh, in her point of view, and she's looking in her point of view are just different types of black men. And she's trying to pick out her day, like which one could it be? Who's Brian? Like, where's Brian? And so I thought that that was clever. I think that it's perfect that she sought him out and all of a sudden there Brian is. He's like, are you looking for me? Like, my name's Brian. And she's like, uh, why? She was like, and he's like, cause I'm him. <laughs> I thought that that was, um, I thought that that was clever um, to make him like pop onto the screen, like, uh, get rid of her anxiety by like meeting face to face. But we're going through the film and um, she notices that, you know, uh, she notices, she's like, oh man, she, she, she's invited. So, so Kenya is invited out to a, I believe it's an engagement party. And she's looking, she's walking, she's like, oh my gosh, you know, your, your backyard is beautiful. Your land, the landscaping and the lady's like um oh let me hook you up with our landscaper and she was like no he he wouldn't do a job as small as mine so she just bought a house so that kind of paints a picture of her financial stability she's you know stable she's um rising up in her career and so it would be perfect you know what better way than to get your your backyard remodeled so that you can have a housewarming the plot twist is is that the landscaper ends up being brian and you know they go back and forth he gives her his card and i think it's perfect that she actually follows through and she does call him um, so he comes out to her house and that's where we get to meet Max, um, the dog. <laughs> I think the dog Max is an excellent comic relief, like with, within the tension of them, you know, having the dynamic of being black and white, her being black and he being a white guy, like Max was like coming in and breaking up that tension. So I thought that, that was, that was awesome 
you know, their first kind of personal connection meeting, you know, outside of public, not in public, meaning, you know, in a more personal setting, Max was there to kind of break the ice. <laughs> Appreciate the uh, candid scenes of Black culture. So there were candid scenes of Black culture that I appreciate in the film. Let's get into when it started getting juicy, like the, the quote started to begin to stick out to me. Um, she was like, thank you for coming out here and not holding my rudeness against me. And he's like, oh yeah, I'm glad you, thank you for saying that. Like, <laughs> because she was really rude to him. Um, uh, I don't know. So that's a question that I would, you know, prompt to ask you guys watching. Do you find, have you found yourself in a situation where you're dating someone outside of your race? And did you feel anxious? Did you feel any anxiety? Did you feel uncomfortable? Did you feel like you needed to to be rude to that person um i honestly thought you know that it was rude of her to kind of play this game with him or not really play a game she wasn't playing she just up and left the blind date that they had at starbucks so she wasn't you know playing any game she was just like you know this is not gonna work and he's like yeah sure like he's thinking to himself oh this is probably a waste of my time but he decides to continue to give her a chance. And I thought that that was a, gen a gentleman of him. And so watching this film for me, I really didn't even, I just saw two beautiful people cause they both were like in their prime in this film. They looked good. Sana looked good. Um, Simon Baker looked good. Like he very handsome man. And so in my mind, I wasn't, of course he's a white man, but I wasn't thinking, oh, he's a white man. I was just thinking about, oh, this is a great love story. Um, because Kenya was all about status. Her her mother is all about status and prestige. And Brian is just all about, oh, what makes you happy? You know, what makes you happy in life? But she finally she finally opens the door to him when she's like after they get done um looking at stuff for her backyard she was like do you want takeout and i thought that that was like an invitation um an open door for him and she's like you know let me give it a try but as i was saying i never looked at it as like oh like this is a white guy she's dating like, I don't know, I, I didn't, I'm, I didn't think about race at all. I just thought about two people wanting to get to know each other better. So when she invites him into her space, Brian actually challenges her. And I thought that that was pretty cool. Like, he's like, you know, let me challenge, let me challenge you. So he challenges her lack of color. And he's like, you know, what's with all the beige? Like, There's a scene when they go, he takes her to a community garden. And when they go to that community garden, she gets stuck. Her hair gets stuck in um, some of the shrubbery that's there. And she's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, like get it out, get it out. And <laughs> he's like, breathe, breathe, you're fine, breathe. And it was like, she thought like a spider was in her hair. And then backtrack, when she first meet Max, she's like, okay, Max cannot come inside. I don't do dogs. So there's this list. There's this list of men that she likes, this list of things that she doesn't like. And so she has these lists. Now, I thought that that was um, very um, consistent with her character is that she's particular about everything. And so he's like, okay, so you don't do dogs. You don't do spiders. Um, and then... He's basically saying, so do you, like, do you do white guys? <laughs> and that's what he says. So he's like, so I take it you don't do white guys. So I thought that that was kind of interesting to put into the script as well. Um, it kind of calls out her list. And then she says back, I just happen to prefer black men. 
it's not a prejudice, it's a preference. And then he he shoots back and he's like, sure, it's your preference to be prejudiced. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I don't know. So let me know. Is it prejudice to have a preference? If you if you if you if you know what you like and is that being prejudiced? Or is that showing a preference? So they continue on and she's like, so have you ever dated a black girl? And he's like, all kinds of girls. And she was like, so you're a player? And he's like, no, ju I'm just a landscaper. I take hard earth and make things bloom. And that makes her think like, oh man, he's like, he's <laughs> spitting poetry right now. So I thought that, that was... um that was very smooth of him and let's just let me just say that brian's character is smooth throughout this whole film his character is i would describe brian's character as mellow earthy intelligent because he is an architect but he's a landscape architect and so I thought that that spoke to his intelligence, but he's calm, gentle, one with himself. That's his character. And Kenya is kind of uptight, uh, cautious, um, elitist a little bit. And she gets that from her mom because we, she gets an invitation to a cotillion. And let me know in the comments, has anybody attended a, a black cotillion? So I have not, I have not. I know there is like, it, it, that's associated with class and like high status. Like if you're a doctor or a lawyer and you, you know, you want your, your kids to go to these, you know, this big cotillion. Let me know if you have um, attended. After he says he makes stuff bloom, Another, uh, the next shot I thought was beautiful is when he takes her on a hike. And so they go on this hike and there's a scene, there's a scene where they're in a cave and cinematically all you see from that is their shadows. So they're in a cave and you see two images um, that are all shadowed out in black. And I love this scene when they're in the cave um, because you can't see their ethnicity. Like you can't see their color. You don't know, you know, who they are, eth you know, ethnically. You just see two people enjoying each other's company. So I thought that that was artistic. That was very clever. As they're exiting the cave, it's like they become two new people. Like they're joined and they, they say, you know what? I might want to make this work. I might want to try this. It starts to rain and her hair gets wet. And that's a a metaphor and a foreshadow for okay like I'm going to you know let my hair down and invite you into my space and that's when they become intimate with one another so we have this thing where they talk about the black tax and the black taxes work twice as hard um, to prove yourself equals I do feel like there is a need to work harder to prove yourself, especially in environments like uh, being a doctor or being a lawyer, or being a top accountant. I feel like in those organizations, you do have to really put your best foot forward to prove I am capable to be in this space. I am capable to do just as much as you are doing. Um, you being, uh, you know, the, this, you know, white collar, white guy, I feel like you do have to, you know, push your, you do have to work harder to maintain that level of visibility. I've worked for organizations where I, my interest gravitates more toward nonprofit, the nonprofit world. So it is all about inclusion. It is all about um, equality for women. And so I find myself in those spaces. And so though it does exist, I try to be a part of organizations that go against that mentality. So 
when we talk about black tax and we talk about all of that, we get introduced to Blair Underwood's character. Now, he is a seasoned actor. Blair Underwood is a seasoned actor. So Kenya begins to date Blair Underwood. Blair Underwood is her brother's lawyer mentor. She's enjoying his company, but she feels like something is missing. Like he's everything that she could ask for. It doesn't feel right for her. There's one scene where they're driving home together, to driving back to his house, Mark's house. That's Blair Underwood's character, Mark. And he leans in to kiss her and she pulls away. And they're leaving, you know, she's walking back to her car. And he's like, you know, no, Kim Kenya, I'll, you know, I'll wait for you. And they look into each other's eyes. And he knows she wants to go home. Like that, that scene was so awesome. Like there were no words exchanged. It was just pure emotion and pure theatrics, but in a good way. It was very theatrical, it was very um, subtle, and it was very much, I don't wanna be here. You're not the one for me. And he's like, oh no, you know, I'll, I'll drive you home. I'll drive you home. And she basically breaks up with him then and there. And I love that, you know, she breaks up with them. They're both standing outside of their cars and she breaks up with him there and she gets in the car. In, in most movies, you would just see her get in the car and drive off. But no, we get to get in the car with her. And she's like, oh my gosh, what did I just do? I cannot believe it. And so she's in, distra she's in distress. She's just distraught that she's made this decision, this decision. So she just lost her ideal black man. I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what I would have done, like for the sake of the story it works because you know she knows she knows that brian is the, is the one for her at that time but she just was fighting it so i don't know i don't know if that would, i've i've never had the privilege of having the opportunity to have you know two love interests and me having to choose like i've not been in that predicament before but I'm glad she made the choice that was right for her. Ends up going to the cotillions. And I think the scene, she's all beautiful. She's in her dress. And the scene with her and her dad is classic. She's crying in this public bathroom. And her dad comes in and reaches his hand over the bathroom stall and gives her a tissue. And it's like, you know, sweet pea, you know, what's wrong? I thought that that was a classic scene because she's, again, she's she's distraught. She's not in her element. She's sitting on a dirty toilet, which I'm sure that is not in her character. And I also want to say that this film ins inspired my short film. So I did a short film called Fried Chicken. It was about a woman who was creating her first Sunday meal by herself. And she didn't want, you know, the instructions of her mother and she was like this uptight uh, girl as well. And by the end of the film, she decides to let her hair down and, you know, have this, you know, big dinner. Um, so I will link my short film in the description. So check it out and let me know what you think about it. But we're getting ready to wrap this review up. Um, her dad is there consoling her and he's basically like, you know, choose what you want, follow your heart. And I, so I think that we all should follow our hearts um, and whatever that entails. And I think um, one of the questions I would have is how is this film relatable or different now in 2022? Like it's been some, you know, some time, almost two decades. So how does this film you know relate to situations now and I feel like things are so polarized like I feel like um there is an agenda to separate people um and so I'm curious to know if you would feel comfortable 
dating outside of your way outside of your race um at this time i would like to say i'm pretty open but i have had experiences i've tried to be open so um on, i you know i've been on dating apps and the two times i have entertained a white guy they actually ghosted me <laughs> so that's been my experience um so you know i don't know <laughs> to each his own you know everybody has their own experiences so i would just say follow your heart and do what's best for you at the end she chooses brian her brother lets her use his jaguars jaguar i don't know why i said it like that jaguar to you know go get brian um she almost thought she lost him he's not there then we see max we see max again it's like that bond like to break the tension of black and white max is like that that um comic relief or that tension re reliever um so we see max first and then we see brian and you know they ultimately come back together and so my question is, she brings him back with her. So does Brian get to go to the cotillion? That's just a question. Like, I'm, I want to know, does Brian get to go to the cotillion? Is he coming to the cotillion or not? <laughs> so thank you so much for watching this movie review of something new. I'm sure there's a lot more that we can discuss, but let me know in the comments section and I will meet you there. Have a great weekend and I will talk to you in the next one. Bye guys.